Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I'm a little under the weather today, but the show must go on. I actually sound worse than I feel. And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo IdeaPad S940. This is one of their high-end ultra books that uh, just came out or is about to come out. And it's a 13.9 inch laptop that you can configure with a 4K display that supports Dolby Vision HDR for the video playback apps that support it. So it's a pretty fancy little computer that we're going to take a deep dive into here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Ultrabook is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The one they sent to us has the 4K display. It is 13.9 inches IPS, uh, really nice viewing angles on this, as you can see, a really uh, well-designed machine here. It's got uh, this really neat curve to the glass on the front as well. It really feels premium. But the display is not a touchscreen, despite the fact that it is all glass. You would think you could touch it and navigate around. Uh, you cannot do that on here. So this is limited to uh, strictly mouse usage, at least on the IdeaPad version. I do think there is a version that uh, will be a two-in-one. I think they're selling that in other parts of the world right now. That one will be called the Yoga, but the IdeaPad is the laptop version. Another thing I liked about it is that it's very well balanced. So when you want to open it up, uh, you can just pull up the lid here and it will not take the keyboard with it. And that's always a touch that I like to see on these devices. Uh, the weight on this one is 2.6 pounds or 1.17 kilograms, not all that heavy. Inside is an i7-8565U quad-core processor. It has eight gigabytes of RAM that sadly is not upgradable. I would love to see 16 gigs on something like this, especially if you can't upgrade it, given that this is kind of the flagship model, but eight gigs is uh, all that's available at the moment. It has a 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive inside that you can upgrade. And I'll put a link down below to the service manual that gives you more information about what is inside. So you can upgrade the storage, but you can't upgrade the RAM. Now this one retails for about uh, $1,800 here in the US. And then there's a 1080p version with an i5 processor that sells for $1,399. And you'll probably get a little better battery life out of the 1080p version. We'll get to battery life here in a few minutes. Now, one thing I've liked about Lenovo devices over the years are their keyboards. Their ThinkPad keyboards are legendary. Uh, the IdeaPad and Yoga keyboards are also equally nice. Now, this one has the same IdeaPad and Yoga uh, layout that we've seen over the years. Nicely sized keys with decent spacing. But the key travel on this one, in other words, how far the keys go down when you push them, is much shallower than other yoga devices we have looked at here on the channel. So as a result, I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting used to this keyboard just because my muscle memory is trained when it's feeling this layout to expect a deeper travel of the key. And I haven't been typing as accurately on this one as I have on other Lenovo devices with a similar keyboard. So if you are moving from another yoga or idea pad, uh, this might take some getting used to. The keyboard is backlit though, so you can see it in the dark, and it also has a very nice trackpad that feels very accurate and is a good premium feel for a premium laptop. Now, given its small size, the only ports you can fit on this device are USB-C ports, and we've got three of them to look at on here. On the left-hand side, we have a standard USB-C port. However, it does not support video out. It just does data and power. Uh, and then you've got a blinking light here that on my test model here doesn't shut off. It is constantly blinking whether it's plugged in or not. I would imagine this might be a battery life indicator normally, but right now I'm at 64%. Not sure why it's blinking. I can't get it to shut off. It's just something this machine is doing. Uh, you've got a full-size headphone jack here underneath that USB-C port. And then on the other side, you've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. These are four-lane ports, so if you are hooking up uh, external GPUs or something, you can certainly get that done and get the full performance out of these. They support data, they support power, and of course they support video. So if you are connecting to a dock, uh, you can connect up to one of these Thunderbolt ports versus the USB-C port on the side to get all of those things going with a single cable. Now this is not fanless, it's got an uh, air intake here that exhausts out 
uh, between the monitor and the uh, bottom of the unit. I found on my test version that when I pick it up, I'm hearing this, the uh, fan blades actually rub against the metal here. So I'm not sure if this is just an early uh, version that will have some corrected industrial design to it, but I am feeling that fan and actually hearing it uh, rubbing against the metal when I pick the computer up like so. Uh, so if you get one of these, let me know if that is still happening in the comments section because it seems like it might just be something unique to this particular computer, but it is something nonetheless that uh, you should be concerned about. There is no fingerprint reader on this, interestingly enough, but they do have a camera on board that can do face recognition for Windows Hello. And it also has some other features that track your eyesight. And I wanted to show you one of those now. Let me get out my external monitor and we'll give it a quick test. Now this uses a piece of software called Glance to track your eye movement. And you can see when I turn around now to look at the computer, this little window here turns green because it found my eyeballs here. And if I select this steam window and just turn my head to the right, you can see it's automatically moving that window back and forth most of the time. Uh, and I can basically just look at the display that I want that window to appear in. Now it won't do that if I take my hand off the mouse, but it, what it will do is move the mouse pointer to the other display. So if you have a bunch of displays connected and you can never find the mouse, uh, this might be one way to do that. It actually works pretty nicely once you get it set up. I found, though, that it didn't like it when I had the monitor uh, spaced above the computer. It wants it to the side, uh, so it can detect side movement here, but apparently not up and down. But it seems to work pretty nicely. Kind of a gimmicky thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. So let's take a look now at performance, and we'll begin with YouTube running with a 4K video at 60 frames per second. It seems to be running just fine on here with the 4K display. Uh, we had a few drop frames when it started, but it hasn't dropped any since. So you might see a little bit of a stutter when you click on the video initially, but after that it will be smooth sailing. I expect 1080p content here to function about the same. So decent performance out of the display and the computer uh, for doing web video. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the other things the display can do for watching video in a second. Uh, we also looked at web browsing, and we'll take a look here at the nasa.gov homepage. That uh, seem to spin up very quickly off of that quad-core chip with the AC wireless on board. So I think all the basics that you'll do on this device on the web, watching video, doing email, and that sort of thing, should work out just fine. Now on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 185 on version 1.0 of that test and 97.8 on version 2.0. And that puts its performance where I would expect this processor to fall into. So overall, no problems doing the basics. You can even run Microsoft Word on it, of course, as we did. And as you can see here, everything was very snappy and responsive, even at 4K. So let's move on now to battery life. And my recommendation, if you choose the 4K version, is to keep that power adapter nearby because the 4K display at its 500 nits brightness, which is very bright, uh, will eat up that battery very quickly, even if you're doing some of the basics. So I'm seeing about six and a half hours of battery life with the display at kind of a mid-range brightness. And that's something you always run into on these 4K laptops. It just takes more to drive these displays, and as such, your battery life gets reduced quite a bit. I think you might get an extra hour or so out of the 1080p version of this same computer. So this is not going to lead the industry on battery life by any means, and keep that in mind. It looks great, uh, but that does come at the cost of the battery. And if you do decide to look at some of those HDR videos we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, that will certainly impact things more significantly. Likewise, running games and other uh, high, you know, high uh, intensity kinds of applications will also negatively impact that short battery life. And speaking of gaming, we ran a few games on here to see how they performed. Fortnite at 1080p got about 25 to 40 frames per second. That's about what we've seen with these i7 Intel processors. This does not have a discrete graphics processor on board, so you're relying on the Intel hardware. So it's not bad, but you have to turn all the settings down to get the game even remotely playable. This is really not a very well-suited gaming device. Uh, but it does run older games quite well. We had Half-Life 2 running at 1080p getting around 90 to 200 frames per second, depending on what was going on on screen. And then we also loaded up Rocket League, low settings at 1080p, about 25 to 35 frames per second, 
when we turned down the resolution to 720p, we were getting 30 to 40 frames per second. So again, not a gaming device, just keep that in mind, but it is possible to play some games on it, and certainly retro emulation and some of the older games will perform adequately on here, but don't expect anything recent to play very well on it. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 7,065. The graphics performance is within the margin of error of other recent i7 devices we have looked at. The CPU performance, though, looked a little bit lower than what we saw out of the IdeaPad 530S and the Yoga 920 recently. Uh, but overall, it's performing about where I would expect it to. Now, one of the things you have to be concerned about with a small laptop like this is the temperature because you're cramming a lot of components into a small space. Now, the fan noise on it when it's running under load is not all that loud, but there are some compromises when you don't want a loud fan, which is CPU throttling. And we ran the 3D Mark stress test, which puts the laptop under load for an extended period of time. And there we got a failing grade of 84.2%. So you will see this device start to slow down a bit the longer it is running under load. And that's a result of just cramming a lot of power into a very small footprint and it just can't get that heat away efficiently enough. So it will slow down the processor to compensate. And that might have been what we were seeing on that 3D Mark benchmark test. Now it plays back video quite well as we saw a little bit earlier. Even high-end files like this Jellyfish test file we're running on screen right now uh, ran without any problems. This is a 4K HEVC file, 140 megabits per second at 10 bits. It worked great on here, no drop frames. It looks beautiful on the display here uh, as it runs as well. Uh, we also loaded up Netflix because Netflix, Amazon Video, and a few other streaming services that offer Dolby Vision HDR are compatible with this computer and this display. You have to download their apps from the Windows 10 App Store. And once you do and you load up those videos, you will get 4K Dolby Vision HDR running on this display. And it looks great. And especially when you turn up the brightness on the display, everything is really super crisp, uh, primarily because you're packing so many pixels into a very small screen here. So if you are a movie watcher and you find yourself watching movies on the go quite a bit, it looks really, really nice on this display, and I was quite pleased with the overall quality of the display, both in its color and its brightness. So that was something that was pretty cool and unique, and I think it'll be something we'll be seeing a lot more of on PCs as the years progress. Now, audio on the device sounds pretty good. It's got two speakers here on each side of the keyboard deck. It supports Dolby Atmos, so you'll get decent spatiality of sound, depending on what your media is supporting. And overall, I was pleased with it. Not a lot of bass, but it is nice and clear and crisp and really nice stereo separation. And of course, if you want better audio, hook up some headphones to that headphone jack or connect up some Bluetooth headphones. Now, it also supports Linux, and we booted up Ubuntu 19.04. We've had no problems with it for the most part. The video is working properly. It's even working nicely with this 4K display in that it will uh, do that pixel doubling thing so you get nice crisp and clean graphics. The uh, equivalent on Windows is their scaling feature. So that was really nice here. That looks great. Uh, it also supports uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And I was even surprised to see that Thunderbolt is working here without any problems. I've got my little Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter here. This is the 10 gigabit one. Uh, when I connect it up, it will recognize the device and start working immediately. So your Thunderbolt works. Uh, so overall, everything just seems to be functioning properly here in Linux. Uh, one exception, though, is the quality of the audio. So the sound hardware works. You'll hear sound. But for some reason, the speakers get really low and tinny. It's kind of weird to have such nice sound in Windows and such poor sound in Linux. Uh, so there must be some driver for the Atmos audio that these speakers need to sound proper. And unfortunately, they don't seem to be sounding all that great. So you might want to look at uh, a USB audio device or plugging in some headphones or something if you intend to use Linux with it. But maybe there's a driver that will get those working a little bit better. But I was pleased to see how well Linux runs on this because typically these uh, Windows laptops don't always play so well with uh, Linux, especially at the higher end of the market here. So good stuff. And 
Uh, overall, not a bad laptop. It's got a few quirks to it, as we uh, talked about here throughout the video. Uh, my chief concern is just the fact that that fan keeps rubbing at the bottom of the uh, laptop here. And again, I think that's something maybe unique to just this particular unit, but it's something I think you should check for immediately when you get yours to make sure that it's not a uh, system-wide problem here with the S940 from Lenovo. So that's going to do it for the idea pad. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.